Consider the following column spark lines. If you only looked at the spark lines, and not at the values, you'd guess that Manchester made more profit in the first three months than Chicago. But a glance at the actual profit values shows that Chicago actually made about three times more profit than Manchester. The column spark lines are misleading because, by default, Excel only considers each row's values when setting the maximum and minimum values for the bars. These maximum and minimum values are also called the vertical axis values. In this lesson, we'll change this behavior so that the size of the bars gives a true indication of each branch's relative profit. For this lesson, you need to open the sample file, first half year profit report one from your sample files folder. I'm going to begin by deleting the line spark line in column I and the win loss spark line in column K. I'll do this by deleting the entire column. So I'll select column I, then right click and delete. And now select the column containing the win loss spark line and right click and delete. And I'm left with only the column spark line. I'm now going to set a common maximum and minimum value for all spark lines. And then the size of the bars will truly reflect each branch's individual performance. To do this, I click once on any one of the spark lines. And notice that when I do this, a thin blue line appears around every spark line. This is called a spark line group. And it means that when we use any of the spark line design tools on the ribbon, the settings will apply to all spark lines in the group. Now I'll click Spark Line Tools Design on the ribbon. And in the Group section, notice that there's an Axis option. I click Axis. And notice that under the Vertical Axis Minimum Value options, at the moment we're creating an automatic Vertical Axis Minimum Value for each spark line. But I'd like the same minimum value for every spark line. So I'll change that to same for all spark lines. Now I'll click Axis once again, and in the Vertical Axis Maximum Value options, the same thing applies. Instead of having a different automatic maximum value for each spark line, I'm going to have the same Vertical Axis Maximum Value for all spark lines. If I now look back onto the worksheet, I can see that the columns for Chicago sales often almost fill the cell. But if I scroll down to UK Manchester, you can see that the relatively small sales volume is now reflected in the size of each column. Now let's move on to spark line formatting options. I'll click on any one spark line in column I to select the entire spark line group and then click spark line tools design on the ribbon. And let's first focus on the show group. Notice there are checkboxes for high point, low point, negative points, first point and last point. Let's look at what each of them mean. If I click on high point, notice on the worksheet that the largest bar in each spark line has been shaded red. Now I'll click low point and the shortest bar in each spark line is shaded red. If I click negative points, only negative values are shaded red. And if I click first point, I see the first bar. And last point, I see that the last bar is highlighted. But they were all the same colour. They were all red. So if I used several of these options, things might get a little confusing. But I can select different colours for each of these options. If you look in the style group, and click the Marker Colour drop-down, you can see that I can set a different colour for negative points, high points, low point, first point and last point, if I want to. Now let's look at the Sparkline Style Gallery. It doesn't do much in this example, simply changes the colours of the bars in each of the spark lines. 
but let's look at the gallery and I'll change the bar color to black and now I'll change them back again to the default blue. If we wanted to change the type of the spark line you could delete the column containing the spark line but you can also change the spark line type from the ribbon. So if you click on any spark line to select the entire spark line group you can then click spark line tools design and you can see on the left hand side of the ribbon the type can be line, column or win loss. I'm going to change to a line type of spark line because when you do that it becomes possible to select the markers option in the show group. I'll click the markers option now and you can see that a small dot has appeared on each data point. Let's now change the color and thickness of the line for each of the spark lines. So in the style group I'll click the spark line color drop down. I'll change the color to green and then I'll change the thickness of the line from three quarters of a point to two and a quarter point. And you can see the effect this has had on all of the spark lines. I'll now change the thickness of the line back to three quarters of a point. Now let's talk about deleting a spark line group. At the beginning of this lesson you deleted two spark line groups by deleting the columns that contain them. But sometimes you'll need to delete a spark line group without deleting the column that contains them. And to do this you would select the spark line group by clicking on any cell within the spark line and then on the ribbon spark line tools design and in the group section notice there's a clear option. If I click clear you can see that I can either clear the selected spark lines or clear selected spark line groups. If I was to simply select clear selected spark lines I'd only delete the spark line in cell I9. But I want to delete the entire spark line so I'll select clear selected spark line groups and when I click the spark line has gone but I still retain any other values that might have been in column I. I'm now going to close the sample file without saving. And you've now completed lesson 420. Apply a common vertical axis and formatting to a spark line group.